So we've got an integral here, sine of x divided by the square root of the natural log of cosine of x, all with regards to x with no parameters, so it's an indefinite integral. Now, with no range of parameters here, and I've got natural log of cosine of x, that's something that's going to have to be taken care of when we get to the end. We've got natural log of cosine of x. Well, we can't have negative numbers in here as we go into an imaginary uh, values. And cosine of x, we know, oscillates from minus 1 to 1. So there will be times when x is negative in here, and that will be needed to be taken care of. Now, we've got sine, we've got cosine, we've got square root and natural log. Now, there's a couple of options here. We could maybe split it and use integration by parts, but I don't fancy that with this square root term. So u substitution could be the way forward. So with sine and cosine, we're going to have to have a u substitution and find something to get rid of one of or the other. So I'm going to go here, u equals log of cosine of x. There is other ways that you can go with u substitution on this question, but that's the one I'm going to choose for this question. So u equals the natural log of cosine of x. OK, now if I'm going to do u substitution with that, next thing I need to do, take the derivative of both sides to get my du. So the derivative of log of cosine of x, well, derivative of a log is just the reciprocal of its input. So that's 1 over cosine of x. And then by the chain rule, we need to multiply it by what's inside the input of the log. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. So minus sine of x. So that's all multiplied. And then we need our dx. Now just to tidy this up a little bit, I'm going to go du equals minus sine of x over cosine of x dx. Now we can see that this is tangent, but I'm not going to jump straight in there because I want stuff to cancel out with my sine. So I'm going to leave that as it is and then get now I'm going to get dx on its own. So now dx equals, well if I'm going to bring this to the other side, I'm just going to flip it. So I've got minus cosine of x over sine of x du. Okay, so we're now ready to start inputting this into our integral and rewriting it in terms of u as opposed to x. So let's go for that. So sine of x, that's going to cancel out with this sine of x hopefully when I put it in. Now I've got square root of the log of cosine of x, well that's u, so square root of u in my denominator. So that's ending that part there of my fraction. And now I'm going to put my du in. I've got minus cosine of x over sine of x. So my minus I'm going to bring out to the front. And then cosine of x divided by sine of x du will now replace my dx. So that takes care of that. OK, now we're still not finished. I've got sine of x, sine of x. They can cancel out. That's fine. That's what That was our aim when we picked the u-substitution. But I've now got this cosine of x, which is a little bit awkward. I can't leave that in there. That's not allowed with this u-variable. But what I've got here, u is the natural log of cosine of x. I want to try and get this cosine of x out and find a value of that in terms of u. So to do that, to try and lift this logarithm out, I'll take the exponential of both sides. So now using this, so if I just put a line to there, if I go e to the u, so exponential on this side, and do the same to the other side. So I've got e to the log of cosine of x. So e to the u, that's all good, that's allowed. e to the natural log of cosine of x. So what I can do is here now, e to the ln, they are inverse functions of each other, so they can cancel out. So now I'll have e to the u equals cosine of x. OK, so now I've got a value for cosine of x, so now I can substitute this for e to the u. So now that can cancel out. And now I'm fully into the e to the u variable. So let's just rewrite this. e to the u over square root of u du. OK, now that's looking a little bit more manageable than what we had here. But we still can't integrate. I've got square root of u in my denominator. That's still a little bit awkward with this exponential function. So let's try and make this into 
a whole variable rather than a square root. So now let's go for a different substitution. Let's go for z equals the square root of u. And obviously, if we're going to substitute into z, we need to take the derivative on both sides. So dz equals 1 over square root of u, and then du. OK, now we need a 2 here as well. So that's OK, so now let's get this du on its own. So now du equals 2 square root of u dz. OK, so now I've got e to the u here as well in my numerator, but I've only got square root of u. So for u, I can just write z squared. So I'm just going to make a note of that here. z squared equals u. So now we can fully take this into our z variable. So minus the integral, this will stay. e to the u, well that's now e to the z squared. Square root of u is just z. And then my du is 2 times the square root of u dz. Well, 2 square root of u, I don't want to put square root of u in here because there's nothing to cancel it out with. Well, I know square root of u is z. So I can change this for a z. So that can be a z. So that can be 2z dz. Okay, 2z dz. Okay, right. Now the stuff we can do here, I've got z's to cancel out, and 2 is a constant, so that can also come out to the front of my integral. So we can tidy this up a little bit more. So the 2 out the front, these z's cancel out, e to the z squared dz. Okay, right. Now this here, to try and integrate this, this is a non-elementary function. We can't do this with normal integration rules. So we're going to have to find one of the non-elementary integration techniques. Now we've got the Gaussian integral, so e to the minus z squared, shall we call it. There is that, but this has got a positive. So this one here, the only one we can kind of match this up to is it's the imaginary error function. So the error function imaginary in terms of z, that is the integral and it's e to the z squared over square root of pi and multiplied by 2 and then dz. That gives us the imaginary error function. That's used a lot in statistics. So that is a legitimate result for this if we had 2 over square root of pi. But we haven't got 2 over square root of pi. We've got e to the z squared on its own. So how are we going to do, do that? Well, what we could do, we could multiply it by 1. So what we know is, for example here, square root of pi divided by square root of pi, that equals 1. So if I multiply this, so if I bring this out here, if I got square root of pi over square root of pi, and put my minus sign, I'm not changing my integral. So what I can do is, if I want to get this, this two could also come out, and so could the square root of pi. And one square root of pi can stay inside the integral or not. So we can kind of do that. So let's change this up to the top of the board, and let's see how we're going to work this out. Okay, so I've left the imaginary every function in here. So now what I want to do is try and get this to look like this. So then I've got some sort of a result. So two square root of pi over square root of pi. So if I brought this inside the integrand, I would have this, and then leave this, this square root of pi out. So let's rewrite it like that. So I've got negative square root of pi, that takes care of that, and then bring this bit inside the integrand. So I've got 2 e to the z squared over the square root of pi dz. So that's everything that was here is here. We've not changed anything. So that takes care of that. So now what I can do, I'm ready to integrate. Basically this just becomes this. So now I can write this as minus square root of pi and the error function of i, z. But this is the imaginary error function. If it was just the error function, we'd have a minus sign in here. So error function, the imaginary one with z. Okay. 
So now we need to go backwards and get it back into terms of x. So z is the square root of u. So let's write that. So I'll go back to u. So minus square root of pi. Let's write that. Error function imaginary square root of u. So that's legitimate. Okay, so now from square root of u, we want to get back in terms of the log of square root of uh, log of cosine of x. So now I've got minus square root of pi, imaginary error function, and then my input, instead of the square root of u, I've got the square root of the log of cosine of x. So the natural log of cosine of x. Okay, now that, because it's an imaginary function in terms of i, my natural log with cosine in here, when it fluctuates from minus to positive, the minus values will be taken care of in the imaginary value. So that is the result of my integral. Okay, so I'm going to declare this as my answer. So there we go. Minus square root of pi, error the imaginary error function of the square root of the log of cosine of x and the plus c. Okay.